We are back inside another abandoned fort outside of New Orleans, Louisiana. We are here with Lichen Films, Nola Deej, Patrick. We got permission to check out both forts. We're here to get some photos, we're here to get some footage, we're here to document the area, see what's left, get to a little bit of history of the place, and see what's left. I'll leave links below of the people who I'm here with. I'd like to thank the State Park of Louisiana to allow us to come here and film it, document, take some photos, like I said. Let's check out the place, let's get into the video. So when you walk into Fort McCone, there's a no trespassing sign here. You're only allowed here if you have permission. We're now approaching the gate, or the second gate, into Fort McCone. That's the outer fence of the fort. Oh, I can see it, bricks. So the original. Yeah, remember those were original. Wow. Yeah. This, one, this one's all covered. Okay. I guess it probably went all the way across at one time. Boats filled in going to the entrance. Right. But right here, this is like part of the original boat. They have pictures. Uh, I don't have um, access to those pictures. There are pictures of the people like uh, going through a P-Row in the old mode. Right. In front of the fort. Yeah, I can... Yeah, I can see. Do they have cameras in this area? Are they looking at doing cameras? True. Trail cam or something like that. That would be helpful here. Yeah, I'm seeing trash. Wow. I think that's something was done here recently. I'm seeing like a new. And graffiti. Oh yeah, that's that's new. <sighs> that's on the trespassing People, people. Do not put graffiti on trespassing signs, guys. Man, I love those doors. I know they're not original, but. This is like I, I don't. I'm already digging this, honestly. <laughs> I like this better. The more decayed, it's good. That's my genre. If you see my work, that's my this genre. Thing's, this thing's like a catacomb. You're gonna love it. It's a little more spookier than Fort Pike and all. So. Wow. So this thing was never turned into a state park. Yes, but uh, these it bricks was... piled up over here, I believe, they were from the outer wall area. And it looks like there's more even back here. That is a lot of bricks. My guess is that they were trying to restore the fort at one point, or maybe they were used somewhere else. And you can see there's plywood on the ground. My guess as well, that plywood was up on there to keep people out and it looks like people decided to either just break it out or break it down. Even though there is a little fence right here holding it up to keep people out, people still find a way to get in sadly. What kind of history can you give me to, on this fort that you know of or any stories that you know of? Before the port was here, it was actually a camp, um, camp. on the other side over there, um, like an out, like an outside camp hmm. when the port was being built. Right. It was called Fort Wood back in the day, and then later on it got the name Fort Macomb. Like Fort Pike, after the Civil War, it was mainly you know housed uh, like African American soldiers. Um, not much news came out of the fort because uh, due to you know racial tensions stuff like that. It wasn't newsworthy to have uh, stuff from mainly black fort, not black forts at the time. This fort closed um, before Fort Pike because Fort Pike had more traffic going through it. Didn't was uh, didn't this one close like 1871 or something, something like that? Like something really. I mean, this one had a fire. They, they all had fires. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, just like Fort Pike, the Confederates did the same thing, set fire to both the forts before they hightailed it out. Pretty much any fortification out there that set fire to it. Historic-wise, it really wasn't much because um, a lot of it was, a lot of it wasn't re really recorded. I just know that it was built better and built stronger than Fort Pike. Yeah, I, I mean, could, it kind I, of shows. I mean, I could agree. Yeah, I agree with that because I can tell by the walls. I mean, they really put some drier, work. It's It feels higher up. It um, does. It's thicker. Yeah, I can agree with that because these walls are just like, you can tell they put some time, they probably put some thought into this and time into it as well. I mean, the, the, the file that I sent you, you, they'll show you the columns that they had uh, when uh, people were coming back here and they were building the highway. This is like the 1920s at the time. Right. And uh, they had a project back then, um, in the 1930s, to create this into a resort. Uh, same thing happened in the 1960s. The resort thing just didn't work out because the cost involved and they had World War II come on up. And then 1950s and 60s, somebody else came on in, wanted to create a marina. That's where you had the, like the boat thing on the side and all our stuff. It used to be boats right there. Um, there was a pump station over here in the corner, a warehouse. Um, but the guy demolished a lot of the historic value around here. Um, once again, I sent y'all as well. A uh, picture, a uh, woodblock picture taken. And uh, it shows like uh, something along the lines of our boys uh, going to work for the fort, you know. Right. And it shows them getting unloaded from a steamship, like uh, in uniform to go work over here. And when they came over here, they pretty much got the worst jobs. Wow, that's bad. So, yeah. That sucks. But in the end, I mean, like I said, they all, they ran the forts in the end. And, when they shut them down, they went to Plains Indian War, so. Does the state have any plans to do with anything with this, or is it in the same boat as Fort Pike? It's in the same boat as Fort Pike, but this is like Plan B. Plan B. It's not I like, you know, like, like hushed and talk rumors that this is Plan B if Fort Pike is just unrepairable. Because I could see, yeah, I could see, because this one looks like it's in much better shape compared know. to the other. Seven or eight years ago, another archaeologist, uh, historian guy, came on out with the... Uh, uh, college group and they cleaned up a good chunk of the fort and we're overgrown again. Just like in Fort Pike, this is where the cannons, like Patrick said, they would put them right here. They would move them around so they can fire out there at the enemy that are coming toward them on Lake Pontchartrain out there. Actually, I don't know what lake that is. I don't think it's Lake Pontchartrain, but it's one of the lakes that surrounds the fort. Interesting name of the beer can that I'm looking at, and that's what's going on in today's time. So here's a better shot of the well. Now you can actually see it. I uncovered it so you could see it. And like I said a minutes ago, this is why you don't come to places like this, because you never know there could be a death trap like this. And if you happen to fall through there, then you're pretty much screwed. So I know you can't see it on camera, but there's water down there in that well. So we are now entering the blacksmith room. This is on a different side. You had the little hole in the ceiling. This one still has the vent, uh, kind of working, but it has that light that comes down. It makes a really cool. Is this like the kitchen area, or is this? Because I was looking online. Um, this is okay. So what they did, um, it was originally used as a blacksmith. Then they put uh, giant um, metal uh, like drums in here to right. boil the water purify it. 
So that's mm -hmm. what this is right here. This, these would be like little uh, uh, cooking areas for the water, like to boil it and purify it. It's like a water pur purification system. Yeah, there's a ton of mosquitoes here. That is crazy. Yeah, I was curious about this. Um, circular thing on the ground, is that that's like for cannons? Yeah, on okay. the wheels. So this is the How? Top mouth right up here. They're like a, a metal thing right here. Right. And literally, the thing, the cannon extended all the way this far. Not the cannon itself, but the, can the carriage, the, uh, the legs. How big was the cannon? From here to the edge of the window right here. That so is... The cannon can actually face outward. Wow. I mean, it was designed to go punch holes for the ship. Ooh. Uh, but this area wasn't really used as much, so it didn't really have all the importance like Fort Pike did. Hmm. I don't know why, but I really do like this fort more. Oh yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> you got like little hidden rooms. Some bags of sand are brought in, I don't know for what. Maybe for the movies. So. You got bags of sand down there that could be used for anything. Watch out for your second bunch of vines. All these holes you see are little windows so they can peek out and see who's in the courtyard. This is the citadel we're currently looking at. And these are little rooms. They pretty much did whatever they did in that time period. Whoa, look at that. It's a hole in the wall. I guess let's take a look at the bricks. another one of those windows with bars around them. There's another hole in the wall. If I had to pick which fort I enjoyed the most, I would say this one. Even though I haven't explored it all yet, I'm still going through room by room, section by section, seeing what there is. But honestly, this one is a lot cooler and a lot better in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, Fort Pike was cool as well. This one's on another, this one's on another level. And look at that big old tree. Let's go check out, let's go check out the room over here where my camera's at. So it's pretty much the same. It's just really long, long hallways on left and right. Wait, what's up? There's like a drop right here. A drop? A drop, like a drop, but just a little drop, so it only seven. Oh, I see it. <laughs> yeah, be careful, this place is slipping. Oh, I see, you're talking about the, oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't see that. This is why you bring extra people with you, because you never know what you're gonna see and what you'll miss. Yeah. Interesting. It's probably what it's for. I was thinking it's probably for the cannons, but it could be for the drainage. Oh yeah. It could be either way or either one. It could be it could be anything. It could be anything actually at this point. That's true though. Oh 
I don't think we're going to be able to go in that one. I could obviously use this one. But you guys have already seen the inside from here all the way down. Let's go check out the Citadel. Hello, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Oh, he's at the top. Oh, that's one of those little gardener snakes. Yeah, little gardener snake. Oh, this thing's gonna hurt you. Yeah. Are you stuck? <laughs> Is he stuck? I was gonna use my shoe, but I don't want to hurt you, little buddy. No, he's fine. We ain't trying to escape, buddy. We just trying to get you out of here. Trying to go up the brick. Come on, buddy. You can do it. All right, we'll leave you alone. Oh yeah, now that we're in here, that um, crossed my mind. What's the point, in, <laughs> or what was, what's the story behind this big old hole? That was the chimney. The chimney? So you see, it comes up, there's like two of them. So one on this side, one on that side, and they probably had a central hearth in between where they could cook stuff. Um, and uh, they went up and had that curve. The second floor, there was another uh, like fireplace. So it was like a fireplace, fireplace on the second floor. Oh. And when the air went up and rose from the first floor, the, the smoke from the second floor didn't really mix in, so it just went up with it. I've always wondered, because I've been, like so I said- you see like in old houses, for a second, like for like, you'll see this, there were curves like that, the sucking the air from the first floor going on up with you. Wow. Um, so no, this one, this was, this fell down. Um, or somebody took a pickaxe to it. I see several areas where like somebody took pickaxes trying to find treasure. I've always wondered the story behind this, because like I said, I've always been, I've been watching other people's videos, and I've always wanted to know about so, that. So, you'll see on the walls here, and I showed, uh, what's her name, um, this as well. You see these lines, right? Yeah, I see the lines. You know what those are, right? Mm -mm. Those were where the bumps were. They huh. plastered around them. So on the other side, you can actually see it way better than this side. Right. But it's really cool, you go like into the, the gun, like the, uh, Magazine where they cut the gunpowder. Yes. And then the past, the, the plaster, the same plaster back then. You see, it's more weathered. And yeah, over time. Molded. The ones that have the casements are white because nothing's gotten to them. Hmm. So it's just like how they work. Perfectly preserved. That's crazy. So, yeah, going over here, you'll see that the lines a lot more. Yeah, let's see. You can actually, you can actually picture it. So one way over here. But yeah, that, I would love to have been here when they had, had the columns here. It would have been nice. I, I really wish I could find a better picture of that. I still yeah. got it. You really see the lines up. Oh, now, I, whoa, that is neat. Wow. That is crazy. And soldiers would bunk up and everything else. One, two, three stories. Wow. They sure had a lot of little holes so they could look out in the seed. I imagine they stuck those holes. Man, oh, <laughs> I was thinking they had them. They, they camped outside the fort. I mean, in front of the winter time, they probably went on inside here. Oh. Because with the fireplace, I imagine this place would have been nice and cozy. Oh, yes. They probably plugged up all the holes with something. This is neat. But yeah, this is how they originally looked like on the inside. Wow. And I think those are iron beams going across. I'm pretty sure they are. That's what they look like from my view. Yeah. This really does beat the other Fords. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, but it really great. does. That's great. I mean, you're looking at something that's close to 200 years old. Wow. There's a house in uh, Natchez, Mississippi called the Arlington Plantation. I went to go check, or I filmed a couple of videos there, and you should see the damage. It's worse than this. People are just destroying it consistently, and it's just, I mean, it's I, so sad. I went to Natchez, uh, there's a burned out plantation, right? There's just a column to the left. Uh, it's right next to a ghost town, I forgot the name of it. Um, Rodney, but, Mississippi? Yeah, Rodney. Yeah, I went to Rodney.
it's nice that Patrick's able to tell us the history of this place, a part of the history of this place, show us around and tell us some stories of the forts that we have gone to now. Look at the steps. Unlike the last citadel at Fort Pike, we were unable to get through the middle doors. But as we are in the middle of the citadel, this is pretty much the inside of the area. And then here's another one of those chimneys that he was talking, that Patrick was talking about. Let's go walk through this one as well. And look at the steps. But can you imagine just coming here when the time was actually, like their actual time in the 1800s? Here's back outside in the courtyard. Not gonna lie, this is actually a pretty nice thumbnail to be honest. I might actually use this over my thumbnail just because you can see the cistern, you can see the citadel, and you can see the courtyard all in one, and you can see overgrown of the place. <laughs> they took them down here and brought them down here. That I mean, is that could have been for a, um, what they call it, I think it was like a paragon, but you could see, look, you can see right on the edge uh, where the cistern was. Oh, I can see it. Yeah. I gotta get close up on that, actually. Yeah, yeah, oh, where is that? That's going down here. This was the system right down there. I wasn't stepping there. It's probably muddy as hell. Yeah, can't be as bad as inside. <laughs> eh, it's not as bad compared to the inside of it. If you're wondering what all these holes are, I'm pretty sure you already guessed what that was. Bullets. Bullets. People are shooting mm. at the fort. This was done for many years. Oh, okay. I thought. Was, oh, okay. No, nothing new. <laughs> so here's the remains of a cistern at Fort McCone. We didn't see him at Fort Pike, but you're able to see this one because they filled it in, like Patrick said. So this is the remains of Fort McCone's cistern. Once again, everybody go subscribe to Nola Deej. So unlike the back part of the Citadel, this is the front part of the Citadel. This is the courtyard where pretty much they had events that people were standing here doing whatever they did during that time period in the 1800s, all the way till I think 1871 or 1870 when this place got abandoned. So pretty much what you see is all that remains left of Fort McCone on this side. There's a little room back there. I'm just taking pictures of the, of the graffiti, the new graffiti around. How about too? Yeah. Show the state park, yeah. So 
Somebody left a tripod here or something. It's another one of those drainage systems or something. All the way down here. To make our way up here. This is going to be interesting. Ouch. Whoa. Yeah, unlike the other one, this one is way overgrown. Not sure how they got through here. Going that way is not a no-go. So I'm guessing we're gonna have to go this way. On the ledge. It's probably not a smart idea, but I think it's the only way we can actually get up here. So we have to go back down and go on the other side. We're going to attempt this side if we can get up. All right. I think this one's gonna be a no-go for the top of this one. Well. There's a shot. All right, let's see if we can make our way through some more of this bush. I don't think we're going to be getting through here, to be honest. Yeah, it's not worth going up there. It's... it's uh, it's too much. Is get my thoughts on the fort versus the Fort Pike. Honestly, Fort McCone takes the win on this one. Even though we weren't able to get up on the stairways to check out the top part, only a little piece of it we could see. Other than that, this place, this place actually gets the win.
I don't know about you, but these doors, they really kick, they're really kicking. Just look how thick they are. That's gotta be like, what, six inches, seven inches? Massive. Sadly, they're not the original doors, but they are some doors to hopefully try to keep some people out. As you can tell by the sign, which has been covered up by graffiti, so it's kind of hard to see what the sign says, but it pretty much says no trespassing. Private property. But like I said, these doors are just kicking. I can't believe it. I showed you. And then look at the door handle. The lock. Pretty impressive. And like I said before, this place beats Fort Pike by a mile. It's like tire tracks. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video of what you saw. I'd like to thank Patrick once again for getting us inside Fort Pike and Fort McComb. This one, in my opinion, was the best out of both. I'd like to thank Nola Deej and Jill Eichen Films as well for coming tagging along. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you at the next spot. I think I fell in love with the bankroll. Pray up, give money, then we lay low. Then we lay low.